An old joke asks, what's the difference between a comic book and a graphic novel? The answer? $20 on the cover price. There seems to be a lot of crossover between what we call comic books and graphic novels. You might see an individual comic book in a series, and then see those comic books put together into a trade paperback, which people often call graphic novels. For our course, we're going to have two criteria for graphic novels. One, it needs to be written on a higher literary level. And two, it needs to have a self-contained story, rather than something serialized like we'd see in a Superman or Batman comic from the Silver Age or Golden Age. There's some question about when the term graphic novel really appeared. Uh, we looked at pictofiction that was coming up during that later part of the Golden Era, where people were trying to figure out how do we get these folks who had grown up with comics still interested, even though they don't want to read kind of jokey superhero things anymore. So publishers like Picture Novels aimed at these older readers with more adult themes, guns, lust, voting, business scandals, and of course charging 25 cents rather than just a dime that regular comics would see. The first use of the term graphic novel in publication is said to be Marvel's Black Mark, which, like these other publishers, they were working on something for adults. So they were trying to come up with a term for it and couldn't use pictofiction or picture novels, so they call it a graphic novel. And here we have uh, the heroic Black Mark, uh, kind of a fantasy Conan-style character fighting against the bad guys. Traditionally, when people talk about graphic novels today, they use the term uh, created by Will Eisner. So Will Eisner, of course, was famous for working on comics since the beginning of the Golden Age. Uh, he helped create and ran for many years The Spirit, this superhero who arguably had superpowers, uh, although you may have said it's just a good deal of uh, psychological warfare and ability to manipulate people rather than actual hypnosis. And he's just a detective uh, who's very good at these things. Whatever you believe, uh, he definitely is iconic through the Golden Era. But Will Eisner wanted to do something a little bit different. And the story goes that he was on the phone with his agent and describing wanting to do these autobiographical stories and talk about uh, what it was like growing up in New York City. And the agent said, well, you know, I'm not sure who would be a publisher for that comic. And Will Eisner said, well, it's not really a comic. It's more of a, a graphic novel. And uh, in later interviews, he said he just pulled the term out of the air. Uh, maybe he had seen it in places before. Uh, but this is the agreed upon first real use of a graphic novel in the modern stance of having a higher literary level and telling these stories that are cohesive. So the first was A Contract with God and Other Tenement Stories. This anthology, these autobiographical tales, talking about the difficulties of growing up in New York uh, as a Jewish person in the middle and early 20th century. He would go on to produce several more of these, talking about his time in the military, talking about uh, effects after World War II. And we got a new perspective, very good information, very cool stories, but now being told through a graphic formula like we would see with comics. The graphic novel term really took off in the mainstream in the 1980s when we'd see it applied to things like The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, it was a serialized comic, but when it was put all together, it was a complete storyline, and it is written on a higher literary level where we see an exploration of who is this Batman and what happens in a world where uh, corruption continues to override any good he can accomplish. Similarly, people address Watchmen as a graphic novel, even though it was also serialized over the course of several issues, but once it's all put together, it's a cohesive storyline, and eventually people would start writing strictly for graphic novels to intend the story to be inclusive of itself. Nonfiction and autobiography work very well in the graphic format, which give us all kinds of great stories through the 1990s. A few highlights of graphic novels in the recent years includes Mouse, by Art Spiegelman, which uh, juxtaposes the cartooniest that you can take with comics and gives us a very true story from the Holocaust. The Frame Story is all about Art Spiegelman trying to come to terms with his father, coming to understand who he was as a Polish Jew, a Holocaust survivor, and businessman later after the war. Here we have the Jewish people portrayed as mice and the Nazis portrayed as cats which you might think it's a very cute 
Tom and Jerry sort of situation, but once you get into the details of it, uh, it's not cute. It's portraying one of the worst things that has ever happened in the history of humanity, and done so in a strangely palatable manner. Through the comics, you can leap through time periods very quickly, and it adapts very quickly in the reader's mind, much in thanks to those principles we learned about from understanding comics, where it's easy to portray time in certain panels. Here's a sample page telling a true story, showing how his father was able to get back home after the uh, invasion of Poland by Germany. So the trains were still going from the protectorate to the Reich. Uh, only one needed legal papers, of course, thus I did not have. But anyway, I wanted to get on in the train in the direction I went. So we have him as a mouse, but he's wearing a pig mask. Uh, There's a very strong metaphor showing that he's portraying himself as a Polish person. And once they listen, we see... Uh, this harrowing tale where he sneaks across the line and is able to walk over to his parents' house that he never thought he would see again. And oi gewalt, it's Vladik. So a very touching and powerful story, all told through this comics. Another famous graphic novel is Frank Miller's Sin City, which some people would say, well, it's an anthology rather than a technical novel. But since all of the individual short stories are pieced together in a cohesive universe, I could very much be argued literarily as a novel, and it's certainly a graphic novel from its higher literary level. Uh, it's an exploration of characters living in this just impossibly bleak world. The art, too, is amazing, where it uses black and white, this very noir, shadowy, heavy inking system. Uh, but it uses color to magnify and focus on certain things, so such as the villain, the yellow bastard, or uh, Goldie and her gold hair, uh, and the red blood, and the shining eyes of a serial killer. Another autobiography is Persepolis. Here Marjane Sotrapi uh, talks about growing up in Iran before and after the revolution in the 1970s. Uh, first it starts out as kind of a fun kids adventure just describing things what's going on uh, and then we see through her eyes just the world turned to chaos and then becoming a teenager under this oppressive regime. Uh, one of the good moments talks about what it's like to being forced to uh, wear a head wrap, uh, which many people do out of choice, but then if that choice is forced upon you, uh, you try to resist it as much as you could. And there's a good example of uh, she and the other girls talking about how far back on your hair you could put the head wrap and still get away with it, kind of teasing the boys with that. These are very interesting perspectives and good things we can learn about the human condition, all presented through comics. So it's much more palatable than having to read just the words. In fact, many people would argue that it's the images that drive it into our memories and help us remember it further. The graphic novel 300 escalates not only the story, but then also the art with all this hand-painted material by Frank Miller and Lynn Varney. Here we have the tale of the Persian invasion of Greece told in just kind of monstrous perspectives. Uh, we have the here we have heavy narration told through caption boxes, as well as just these gorgeous wide panel double page spreads where we can see uh, ships crashing, uh, as well as hints and shadows of things forth to come. It's a powerful story of these few Spartans who stood against this impossibly large army of all kinds of different warriors from all over Asia fighting. And it's told very well through these images. So, is there a difference between comics and novels? Well, it'd be like trying to say the difference between books and novels. Uh, of course, there's something. You know it when you look, see it. But on some level, they are all the same. Pictures telling stories.